The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has been out for over three years, but I still think there are some things that not everyone knows about yet. So here are five advanced combat glitches and tricks in absolutely no logical order whatsoever. Oh, one thing before we get into it. I've linked the Twitter and YouTube accounts of the people who found these tricks in the description. Please let me know if I made a mistake there or forgot to credit someone. First, let's take a look at updrafts. As you know, these can be used to get a height advantage over your enemies and to go into bullet time to cause devastating amounts of damage with your bow. To make one on the fly, you can use Ravali's Gale or set a spicy pepper or four wood on fire. However, there's a faster and more elegant way to do it. For this trick, you're gonna need either a flame spear, a flame blade like I'm using, or a great flame blade. If you've beaten all the fine beasts, you can easily get yourself one from this handsome fella in the Colosseum. Normally, just hitting the grass isn't enough to set it on fire. But if you pause the game using the quick menus while the sword is mid-swing, the game will slightly glitch out and create an updraft instantly. For attacks that stop you from using the quick menus like jump slashes, you can just go into your menu entirely. This also allows you to chain this trick almost indefinitely. So what can you do with this newfound power? Of course, you can use it to go into bullet time and wreck some bokoblins easily. If you attack while sprinting, you can use it to close the gap between you and your enemies swiftly and lethally. You can also use it to mount Lionels in more original ways than simply headshotting them. And it's fun to use on Talises since it removes the need to climb them. It can even be used to get pretty high up on things in the game world, possibly making it a more versatile alternative to Revali scale even outside of combat. Next up, I wanted to include two different combat tricks using horses. The first one is just a cool trick, while the second one is actually very overpowered. Let's dive into the first one. Did you know it's actually reliably and consistently possible to jump from your horse, go into bullet time and land on your horse again? This isn't game breaking or anything, but it just gives you a nice alternative to constantly walking back to your horse after every enemy encounter. There are a few different ways to do this, which all boil down to a precise timing of stopping your horse and jumping. Here's the setup that works best in my experience. First. Press and hold ZR to pull out your bow. This ensures that you will pop into bullet time the moment you jump off your horse. Next, spam A until your horse is running at top speed. Now pull down on the left thumbstick to stop the horse in its tracks and immediately press X to jump while the horse is still in its short stopping animation. If you got the timing right, you will hear the sound of the horse still stopping while you're already in bullet time. I'll play the clip again in real speed to give you an idea of the timing. Another thing to look out for is that this trick is most reliable on even and flat terrain. It's very useful against groups of mounted Bokoblin archers and it makes the mounted archery minigame a lot easier. On to the more powerful trick you can do on horseback. This is called the infinite active hitbox glitch and it's incredibly overpowered in the right situations. To put it simply, this glitch makes the hitbox of the weapon you're holding continuously output damage to anything that touches the hitbox. This means that you can damage enemies by simply walking into them. To activate it, attack with any melee weapon while you're on a horse and interrupt the attack by holding X to jump. After that, just press B to cancel the jump and you got yourself an infinite hitbox. I would recommend you to learn the timing by doing it with elemental weapons because they keep their visual effects which makes it easier to see if you got it. The effect will be cancelled whenever you unequip the weapon, attack with it or dismount your horse. Sadly, this does consume durability. And results can vary greatly depending on the type of weapon you use. For example, long two-handed weapons easily hit smaller enemies, whereas short swords can be very finicky. Spears have a special twirling animation when you hold Y that suddenly has a lot more potential when used against bigger opponents like Guardians. Also, if you activate the glitch while running your horse, the critical hit modifier gets stored together with the hitbox and all your attacks will do twice the amount of damage and have extreme knockdown effects. 
it allows for some hilariously sad attack loops. You can do all these things with the Master Cycle as well, but it's a lot harder to store the critical hit modifier with it. Outside of combat, you could also use it for mass deforestation purposes if you're uh, into that sort of thing. The fourth trick I'm featuring in this video is luckily also the easiest. I'm talking about sneak strikes and more specifically how you can chain them. Because when you sneak strike an enemy, they are knocked down for a moment, during which they do not hear or see anything at all. Once they stand up again, they will always face the direction you sneak strike them from. So if you just walk around them every time, you can kill most enemies in a few attacks without them even noticing you. You can make this even better by jumping right after you hit the enemy, which cancels the second half of the animation so you can move even faster. It's the little things that add up. Let's take a look at the fifth and last trick in this video. I'm actually very excited to tell you about this one because of everything on this list, this is the one I personally use the most. This glitch is called a shield block reset and it allows you to use enemy attacks to get into bullet time whenever you want. This is because when you block damage with your shield while jumping, your jump counter gets reset. This means that you can essentially do a double jump which gives you enough height to pull out your bow and slow time to make some sweet headshots. Here is a side view to give you a good idea of what it looks like. This can be done with any source of damage to your shield, including projectiles, as long as the attack doesn't bat your shield away like for example Lionel charge attacks do. It also won't work if it is interrupted by things like elemental effects. It can even be done with explosions from bomb barrels or your own bombs. But this consumes so much durability that more than 90% of the shields in the game can't handle it without upgrades. To learn this trick I would highly recommend you to come back to the Temple of Time, because at the entrance is a Bokoblin with a very weak weapon. Every one of his attacks is shield block resettable. To perform a shield block reset, get your shield out and target the Bokoblin. Now wait until right before his attack hits your shield and jump forward into his attack. Don't let go of the target button and do a backflip immediately followed by pressing ZR to pull out your bow. If you got the timing right, you should be able to get into bullet time pretty easily. You can also perform a shield block reset with your own bomb runes, but be warned, this takes a lot of durability and only 3 shields in the whole game can handle it without a durability up modifier. I'll quickly go over the fastest and most advanced method of doing it. First, make sure you have a shield and a short sword equipped. This will not work with a two handed weapon. Now hold ZL, activate your bomb so Link is holding it above his head and walk backwards. Press Y a single time to let the bomb fall in front of you and simultaneously press the left bumper and X to detonate the bomb and jump. Finally just backflip and press CR to go into bullet time. This glitch is extremely useful as you can use it just about anywhere, at any time. Bullet time is a very powerful mechanic in the game, giving you the ability to render your enemies basically defenseless against you. And now, you can trigger it whenever you need it, even in the middle of the desert where there's no high place to jump off of. With the last glitch covered, I think it's now time to end this video. I really enjoyed making this for you, so you could consider subscribing if you want to stay tuned for the future content, but if you're not ready for that kind of commitment yet, that's also fine. Also, feel free to leave any feedback on this video in the comments and if you have any questions or struggles with any of these tricks, you can always ask me on Twitter as well. 